Hey everyone, and welcome to the 10th episode of my Launchpad tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to have a look at what pages are and how we can use them to bring multiple configurations onto our Launchpad in a single live set. First, I will create a track for my samples, and I will create a track for my light effects. And I'll set up the inputs and outputs accordingly. Now, to use both the samples and the lights track at the same time with my Launchpad, I would have to arm both of these, but clicking on one only allows me to arm a single one. So I can hold control and then click the other one in order to arm both of them. So now I can play the drum rack and I get light feedback at the same time. Another way to do it is to tell your lights track to always listen to what's incoming. So now even if it's unarmed, it is still receiving your MIDI information. And you can also tell it to only take input from your samples track. So when your samples track is unarmed, the lights track does not get any input. But when it's armed, the lights track does get the input. I'm going to add a kick sample to the drum rack. And in the lights track, I'm going to give it a nice green color. I just have one light effect and one sample, but let's say I fill them up entirely for the sake of this tutorial. Now I want to expand my project to have a whole different layout of samples and lights so I can continue working on it. And then I could swap to that other layout with performance. These layouts are commonly called pages and there are a number of ways to make them. The first method is using this arm button down here. I can create a copy of my current layout. So this is a second samples track and a second lights track. Let's say I will give this lights track a blue color instead, and I will give it a snare sample instead of a kick sample. So now when this here samples track is armed, I get a green kick. And if I arm this one, I get a blue snare instead. In order to switch between the two drum racks mid performance, I have to MIDI map the arm button to any button on a launch pad. Usually you use the right hand side of circular buttons for this. For your first layout, you will use the first button and for your second layout, you will use the second button. In order for this to work, make sure that when you right click the arm button, the arm exclusive preference is enabled. And now when I tap the first button, I get a green kick. And if I tap the second button, I get a blue snare. There are a few issues with this layout, however. If you press a page that's already currently selected, this will disable it and you will have no output. If you press two at the same time, you will get both at the same time. It can also be impractical to change all of the outputs, but this is something you can easily circumvent by selecting both of these tracks while holding control and then changing the output. That's gonna change the output for all of the selected tracks. A much better way to switch layouts utilizes the change selector. I will take this effect from the second lights track and I will move it onto the first one. And now, instead of expanding the MIDI effect track by key, I'm going to expand it by chain. Now, instead of the keys being on top, there is a chain selector on the top. So I can give this bottom chain an index of one, and then I can use the chain selector to alternate between them. Now, if I try playing this, I get a green kick. But if I move this chain selector to the right, I get a blue one instead, because now this one is selected instead of this one. In order to map this control onto the launchpad's buttons, we go back into MIDI mapping mode, and this time we have to select the range of buttons that we want to use as our layout switcher. So I click on the chain selector. Since I only have two layouts or two pages, I hold down the first page button and then press the second page button. And now at the top where I configure the MIDI mappings, I bring the max down to what my maximum page is. I should also remove the MIDI mappings for the RM segment. So on the first chain, I have a green effect and I have a blue effect on the second chain. For sampling, a drum rack does not support any kind of chain selector, but an instrument rack does instead. So we can group a drum rack into an instrument rack and then expand these drum racks by chain. Now I will bring over this drum rack into our instrument rack here and move it one to the right by the chain. Then I will MIDI map the chain selector similarly to how I MIDI mapped it for the lights track. And now it also switches when I press the buttons. So on the first page, I have a green kick. And on the second page, I have a blue snare. And I do not have to change any settings multiple times or fiddle with the arm buttons. When creating a chain selector, most people will put their drum racks inside of a single instrument rack. But some people like to keep a master drum rack and then have an instrument rack in each sample. Let's see how that will work. I will create a drum rack in a new track and I will put an instrument rack inside of my sample. Now I'm going to copy the two samples from earlier 
into my instrument drag chain. Now I'll expand this by chain and move the snare one to the right. Now, because MIDI mapping every single chain selector would be tedious, we can use macros to map it all the way back to the drum rack and then we can have a single mini map. So I will map this chain selector to macro one on this instrument track, and then I will map this instrument rack's chain selector macro onto macro one of the drum rack. And now when I move this one, the chain selector of the sample will also move. If we create a second sample, the chain selector syncs up. I can now mini map this macro onto my side buttons. And just like that, we achieve the same effect. Press the first button, it's a kick, and press the second button, it's a snare. While this mostly comes down to preference, I believe the drum rack inside of an instrument rack method is much more flexible and more manageable because you can easily visualize where your samples are, which samples you have left to use, and generally switching between each layout. If you wanted to use the full range of pages, which is commonly from the first button to the eighth button down here, you would simply press those buttons and then set the maximum to seven. You can do the same in the second method for sampling, and the same on the lights track. This lets you access a total of eight pages or eight layouts on your launchpad, which you can switch live by pressing the buttons on the side. That's it for this video. If you have any questions about it, please leave them in the comments and I'll answer right away. Thank you for watching. Bye.